Some of the most successful attractions in London's long history have been temporary. The Great Exhibition, the Festival of Britain. The Millennium de... the Festival of Britain was very popular though. And now London has a new temporary attraction. The Marble Arch Mound. Also known as the Marble Arch Hill, the mound is an attempt by Westminster City Council to attract visitors back to the area with a... well, with a, with a big hill that you can climb and get views of the area around. Which is what I did. It's safe to say that it's been controversial. It has been labelled London's worst attraction. What's so bad about it? Well first, let's look at what it is. It's an artificial hill, 25 metres tall, 82 feet in imperial measurements, 15 storeys in London underground terms, made out of scaffolding, topped with a viewing platform and covered with turf. It was originally proposed in 2004 to go over the Serpentine Gallery in Hyde Park. It was designed by the Dutch architectural firm MVDRV. The original proposal was that it would cover Marble Arch itself, but this idea was scrapped due to the risk of causing deterioration to the stonework. When it originally opened in July, tickets to climb the mound were between £4.50 and £8. It's not exactly news that the pandemic has hit London's West End hard. It's an area known for tourism, entertainment, shopping and hospitality, which were, of course, all massively impacted. So, something was needed to stimulate the local economy. The first controversy was the cost. The mound was initially said to cost £2 million, then £3.3 million, which rapidly grew to £6 million. And the question arose. At a time when so many businesses were under threat, was a hillock really the best use of all that money? At a time when London's green space suffers from a lack of investment, when every space in the city is liable to be requisitioned for expensive developments only affordable to the very wealthy, and when so many businesses are under threat in the wake of the pandemic, why is six million being thrown at a temporary attraction? Then there's the issue of the dream versus the reality. It was supposed to be a lush and verdant piece of nature in the city, and it would also contain a cafe and a shop. When it opened, there was no shop or cafe, and thanks to the unpredictable nature of the British summer, the greenery was more like brownery. The fact that a corner had had to be clipped off to accommodate the arch served only to highlight the artificial nature of the attraction, and frankly made it look... well cheap and temporary. The views from the top were not as stunning as promised. The problem is that while the mound is tall, it's not really tall enough. It's certainly not the tallest structure even in the vicinity. As a consequence, the views are far from spectacular. Between the trees and the other buildings, you really can't see much apart from the top of Marble Arch itself. Meanwhile, the mound itself blocks ground-level views of the arch and other buildings in the area. Critics called it underwhelming, if they were being polite. It was compared to a slag heap and to the Teletubbies house. It seemed that visitors did not share the council's enthusiasm. Westminster Council sheepishly admitted that yes, things hadn't quite gone as planned. The mound was not ready when it opened, and they scrapped the admission charge for the month of August, as well as offering refunds to those who had already booked tickets. The deputy leader of Westminster Council, Melvin Kaplan, resigned over his part in events. The council leader, Rachel Robuthan, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, called the unexpected cost of the mound unacceptable, but expressed hopes that it would eventually serve its purpose of attracting people to the West End. The words world-class city got thrown around a lot. The mound is due to remain in situ until January 2022, whereupon it will be dismantled and the greenery will be recycled. Personally, it is my opinion that the money would be better spent elsewhere, perhaps on the green spaces Westminster already has. But aside from that, I thought I'd do my best to give it a fair shake. I visited it when it was free, and I don't live in the city of Westminster, so it cost me nothing. On that basis, I would say... It's all right. You have a bag check at the bottom, you climb the 130 stairs or get in the lift. I took the stairs. And you go to the top. 
This is it, lads. This is what the stupendous lack of hype is all about. There's a barrier around the viewing platform, and I have to say the way the staging wobbles beneath your feet is a little unnerving. I have to confess that I'm not great with heights. The people around me seemed to be divided in their opinions. Some liked it, some were underwhelmed, some seemed to have made their minds up that they didn't like it before they got there, but climbed it anyway. I didn't find the view all that impressive. Certainly, neither Primrose Hill nor Alexandra Palace have anything to worry about, and Centrepoint and the London Eye have better views of the West End. But it was a novelty. I knew what to expect, and I got it. It didn't cost me anything, it didn't take up much of my time, the climb wasn't super onerous. I certainly don't think it's London's worst attraction. I don't even think it's the worst attraction in the West End, hello M&M's world. If you find yourself in the area, then by all means give it a go. I hope you enjoyed this vertically challenged video, if so then I hope you will also leave a like and perhaps subscribe for more. I'd be interested to hear your opinion on the mound. Is it a worthy addition to the tourist map, or is it just a load of hillocks? Have you been up it, and if so, what did you think? Let me know in the comments. And I'll see you all again very soon, at or below ground level next time. Cheerio! And I have got to stop drinking gravy.